On a fjord in central Norway, there's a village whose name is hard for many to pronounce, Kirksetoreya. Police officer Annette Ertvog patrols her beat. Most of the time, nothing happens. There's hardly any crime or political extremism in Kirksetoreya. We're going by the local school. Now and then there are drug problems there. Otherwise, we work with the social welfare authorities, ensure that minors are protected, that sort of thing. But the peace and quiet could soon come to an end. This man is expected to be moving here soon. Mullah Krekar is Norway's best known and most dangerous Islamist. He's said to be responsible for bloody terrorist attacks in his home country, Iraq. The authorities can't deport him because he says he would be tortured or executed in Iraq. Instead, the Norwegian Justice Ministry is planning to send him to Kirksetoreya. Residents of the village are less than pleased. They say their home is not Siberia, and they've already taken in 200 refugees. At the local gathering place, native residents and newcomers frequently meet for coffee and cake. The mayor fears that a religious fanatic could disrupt what he says is successful integration. This Mullah Kreka is one of those people who's always giving interviews and making threats. That's disruptive. It's been conversation topic number one in the village cafe, on the street, and among the neighbors. We don't want views like his here at all. We're totally unsettled. Is Mullah Krekar coming or not? And the more time that goes by, the more of us are saying, no, we don't want him here. In the asylum seekers' hostel, no one wants to acknowledge the convicted terrorist, at least not in front of the camera. They say assuringly that you can't even recruit people here to speak out against caricatures of Mohammed. I keep the prophet in my heart. I don't care what others have to say about him. Nothing negative has happened to us here. Why would we follow this man? The local residents don't want Krekar to come here. And Krekar doesn't want to go. He was granted asylum in Norway in 1991, but was said to have returned to Iraq later to organize terrorist attacks. He's been in preventive custody after again issuing death threats against critics of Islam. Many Norwegians now say that's where he should stay, and conservative politicians are supporting that position. That this man, who poses a threat for the country, can run around freely, contradicts the Norwegian people's conception of the rule of law. That's why we should keep him locked up until we can deport him back to Iraq. The Norwegian government has been trying to expel the committed extremist for more than a decade. The Norwegian media is following the political campaign with a critical eye. But the Norwegians became concerned after attacks on journalists in Paris and Copenhagen. There's been a clear increase in the number of Muslim groups with radical positions here in recent years. It's alarmed police and politicians, and they're on alert for a possible terrorist attack. But Officer Annette Ertvog does not seem alarmed. If Mullah Krekar does come to Kirksetorura, he will have to report to her at the police station three times a week. We'll treat him the way we would any other case. I will ensure that public safety is guaranteed. We're certainly not afraid of the assignment. Nearly everyone in Norway has now heard of Kirksetorura. All the villagers want to do is get out of the headlines. 
But many say they fear that when the enemy of the state arrives, their lives will be turned upside down. 